back. We're live. We're here at 4 p.m. 4 o'clock rock here on Think Tech, Think Tech Now, Think Tech Live, Think Tech Forever, Think Tech Community. Huh? Okay, and uh, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, our flagship energy show, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And today on the show, we have George St. John. Raise your hand if you're George St. John. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and he is a, an, a, a, an engineer, a licensed engineer, we like that. And he's going to talk about, um, gee, biomass and hydropower, that's very important. And sitting next to him uh, is Lisa Harmon of Hawaii Energy. I'm going to actually start with her uh, because she has something to tell us about the clean energy program uh, that Hawaii Energy is doing on July 27th. Lisa, all yours. Okay, thank you so much. Well, we are having a kickoff breakfast for our clean energy allies to tell them all about the new program year that's just started on July 1st for us at Hawaii Energy. It's going to be at the Ala Moana Hotel on Wednesday, July 27th at 7.30 in the morning. They can sign up via our website. Just go to hawaiienergy.com and we do have a front page slider that says click here to register and they can follow that link. Oh, great. Uh, what am I going to find when I go? Well, at the breakfast, we're going to be giving a presentation on our business and residential programs, what's happening this year, an update on all our new incentive amounts and technologies that Great. we incentivize. And we're also going to be talking about the Clean Energy Ally program, which is how we engage with those market players that bring us these energy efficiency projects. We're very grateful to them for um, involving us in the projects to being able to help their customers. So we'll be doing an update on that program as well and asking for some feedback about what they'd like to oh, see. Good idea. How we can support them better in the marketplace. Yeah, great. So does it cost anything to get in? Um, you have to be registered as a clean energy ally. So again, you can find that on our homepage as well, um, hawaiienergy.com, and says register to become a clean energy ally. And once they're officially registered as an ally, they can register and come to the breakfast at no charge. Great. And there'll be other breakfasts too. Right of there. course, lunches, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of good out. information to share with them. So. Okay, George, cross examination. George St. John, what do you got? You mean with regard to this? Yeah. Well, it sounds interesting. What are some of the examples of the things you guys are pushing? Well, our, one of our biggest categories is lighting, of course. That's one of the easiest LEDs. and simplest retrofits, yes, that um, cu electricity customers can do. So we incentivize LED lighting, absolutely. Are they doing anything with the street lights? Um, I think that's out under uh, the city and county. They're putting an RFP out for that, but that isn't a big opportunity in the state to retrofit the, the yeah, street huge. lights. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have incentive funding for that. Great, Lisa. Thank you for coming down. Okay, you're welcome. Just to, just to re reiterate, that's July 27th, a yes. Wednesday. Yes. Uh, at 7.30 in the morning at the Alamoana Hotel. And if you want to sign up, go to hawaiienergy.com. Dot com. And then on our front page, there's a link to register. So all of the trade allies, the engineers, the architects, the contractors, the lighting distributors, we invite all of those folks to please sign up for our program and come to the breakfast and find out more. Okay, we'll see you there. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks Lisa. so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having Absolutely. me on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for coming down. We take a short break, and we come back. Uh, Ray Starling will join us as my co-host, and we will find out what's going on with George St. John. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m., Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on ThinkTechs. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and making it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan the Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. We're back. Uh, and Ray Starling has joined us, and it's Ray and George St. John, licensed engineer, and me. And I'm going to give Ray the, the, um, the distinction of uh, being able to introduce uh, George. What do you think, Ray? All right. Well, 
George, uh, George actually is a friend of mine that, uh, and a colleague that uh, I've worked with over many years here in Hawaii. In fact, uh, I think when we first uh, came in contact with each other, we were on opposite ends of uh, a contract negotiation with uh, actually H Power, the H Power contract. So I was working for Hawaiian Electric and he was working for the city and county, I think. And uh, when I got to know George, I, I realized that he was uh, more knowledgeable about uh, renewable energy, and this was, what, 25 years ago, uh, than it anybody. It was At before least. we didn't talk about <laughs> renewable energy. Wow. We just talked about biomass and, uh, and hydroelectric. And that's, that's why I uh, suggested that we have George in uh, today to talk to us about uh, what, what's been going on in Hawaii for a long time. Everybody else thinks it's renewable and it's new, but it's, uh, it's renewable and it's not so new here in Hawaii. Yeah. It's been here for a while. Well, George, you were on the plantations. You were working in a plantation an engineer, I take it, in the plantation, am I right? Well, I started on a plantation, and then I worked right down the street at Amfac. Uh -huh. We had five plantations. But Ray is right. It's, it's kind of funny to hear some of this green energy called renewable and new. Uh, we didn't know it was worth so much. And <laughs> as you're aware, um, most of the neighbor island utilities didn't exist. Uh, Pioneer Mill was Lahaina Light and Power. And of course, they burned the gas, the residue from the sugar cane, to fire their boilers. And that ran the mill. And in the case of a place like Pioneer that was irrigated, it wouldn't run all the irrigation pumps. Places that didn't need to be irrigated, like Puna, it was supplied to the grid. And that's where the wars began with guys like Ray on that company he was working for, <laughs> and sugar mills. And eventually, uh, Act 102 was passed, which mandated that the power company buy power if it met certain criteria. So if you and I built a power plant, uh, we could then go to the utility and say, all right, we want to sell you power. And they really didn't have a choice, as long as it wasn't displacing something else. See how times have changed, eh? Uh, <laughs> rather drastically, <laughs> yeah. uh, They also, almost all of the sugar mills had uh, small hydroelectric plants, uh, some in excess of a megawatt, most smaller than that. Uh, and in fact, uh, Ray and I worked, restored one on Maui, um, 500 kilowatt, half a megawatt, way up in the mountains above Lahaina. It was hard to get Ray to stop taking photographs of the beautiful scenery from that day. <laughs> and machinery, too, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we had this very old, old machine, and uh, we completely rebuilt it, put it back online, and uh, as far as I know, it's, it's still running. And that's yeah, right. the case. There's about every island except Oahu probably has half a dozen. And just how old was this particular facility? We, just know, for we know it's record. at least 100 years old. Early 1900s. And it was abandoned. And, uh, and actually, George found it. And we went up and kicked the tires a little bit and uh, figured that we might be able to put it back together. And, uh, and so we, we did. talked to the landowner, and, yeah. and he yep. eventually hooked it back up. But that's the case. There's hydros. There, were, there used to be hydros here on Oahu. In fact, there's uh, Lake Wilson. All, all associated with, with uh, sugar mills, sugar plantations. I don't know if they all were, but all the ones I was familiar with were. The one that's below Lake Wilson uh, was Wailua. Uh, but I think the border water supply had a couple. I think they had some that operated off the Nuuana Reservoir. And the beauty of them is that they just last forever. There's no, there's no high tech involved. And, and it doesn't require a lot of maintenance either. I, no, they can run for days and days and days. Yeah. Uh, the, the interesting thing, the thing that can be done is if you have two reservoirs at different elevations, then the hydro can be a hydro when the water is running down. But at night, if you have surplus energy, like from a windmill, because... Pump it back up again. Pump it back up. And since you would be using wind or wave or solar, um, no machine is perfect. 
most of them about 80 percent so when you pump it up 80 percent going up 80 percent coming up you only get 60 percent back but you didn't pay for the fuel and the beauty of that is that when you have surplus energy now at night almost well most of the solar plants shut down at night as you're well aware. I'd like, to meet, <laughs> I'd like to meet the one that works at night. <laughs> but the wind and wave gets shut down at night because the, the grid can't absorb it at night. They have to keep their large. So at night, you can absorb all that power and then give it back to the grid during the day. So it's the perfect storage system. And it starts and stops fast. It has no thermal requirements. A steam plant, a shut down steam plant, a cold at night, can take hours to get back online. Hydros, it's almost the fastest Media. thing there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know, a, a point about the plantations is they were, they were independent communities. Yep. And uh, by, by the requirement of independent communities, they had to have their own water systems. Uh, they had to have a lot of things that communities need to have. And when we lost them, we lost all those things. We lost the, the ditches, you know, the water irrigation systems. Well, no, no, no. We didn't lose them all. A lot of them are in disrepair right now. They're not. Wyoming Ditch is still supplying water. That's how the Ever Plain is yeah. able to stay. Ohala Ditch is not. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, one of the things is, uh, you know, these, these uh, pumped hydro or hydro facilities. And they're, I agree. We talked before, they're all around the place. Uh, we made we made a movie of uh, one in Wailuku River, um, in the Big Island, which is northwest of uh, Hilo. Pumped uh, hydro? Not yeah. not pumped hydro, but a hydro facility generator. Yeah. Uh, and we 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 made uh, a trip also into Kauai, in uh, near Mount uh, Ali Ali there, um, which is really something at the top of a hill. And wow, it's very impressive. And they run easily all the time, no sweat. They look good. I guess uh, you can paint them up so they last a thousand years. Um, actually, Elko has three, maybe four. They used to have four. One of them got one of them wrecked, but just outside of Hilo, the, ri the river there. And then there's two more, uh, privately owned, a little further upstream. So there's lots of hydros in Hawaii, and there could be more. Uh, we have many. Well, that's, that's the question that I'm going to pose to you directly. And Ray will back me up on this right after the break. Okay. We're going to ask you, George, why there aren't more. When it's so good, how come we don't have it everywhere right now, okay? Fair enough. Think over that question. You know, tick, 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 tick. We'll be right back after this short break. You won't. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me live every other Monday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. We're back. George made us come back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's George St. John. He's a licensed engineer. My co-host is Ray Starling. And we left, uh, we left uh, George with this pregnant question, why aren't there more, uh, you know, uh, 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 clean energy hydropower plants around the state. What happened? Well, there's probably about a half a dozen answers. You, of course, you know what a, a NIMBY is. Yeah. And a PITBY. Yeah. I know, I know what a Coloco Dam is, too. Okay. Well, now, that's, that's a good loaded question. That's a dam where there was a notch in it, and somebody filled it up with dirt. That was the safety device. You would throw the book at a guy that disconnected the brakes on your car, and we should have thrown the book at the guy that put the dirt in the notch. That is an absolutely foolproof. It's harder to think of something that's simpler than a notch in a dam. That's why that failed. And unfortunately, that story's got repeated, repeated over and over without explaining what went wrong. But it gave hydropower a black eye. It huh? did. Yeah. It, well, it gave dams a back, black eye. Yeah. Now, we have many, many, many reservoirs still in the state in use. And a lot of them 
were built high up in the mountains so they could store some water overnight and irrigate at the high levels. And then at other times they could irrigate low levels. We can use those now from one to the other as a hydro. And like you say, they're very easy to maintain. They're very cheap. The regulations are difficult. Whose regulations? Mostly, mostly things like um, land ownership. Uh, one time Ray and I were working on, not closely related, but we were working on wave energy. So we went to the Corps of Engineers to talk about it. And it was going to be offshore. Well, offshore owned somebody, belonged to one, one outfit. The, da the breakwater belonged to another outfit. Inside the harbor was another. You reach a certain le a level in the bureaucracy, and it's better to go have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you heard it here on <laughs> <laughs> The multi-level. Uh, and then it, it has, in the past, been difficult to negotiate a power contract. Mm. Uh, you mean one where you can rely? No, once it's done, once the power contract is done and in operation, it's, it's, quite, it's quite, yeah. quite good. Yeah. Um, that little hydro that Ray and I worked on, it was only half a megawatt, but there was this situation where the power, the load goes down, the plants have to go down so you can keep them online. Well, that plant had been online before the utility existed. But when the sugar mill shut down and we went back to put it back, well, now it was a new one then. In the meantime, the windmills had come online. But the windmills had to shut down at nine. But since we were newer, they had seniority. So this tiny little hydro had to shut down at night. So somebody got to go up to the top of the mountain, shut oh, it down. Oh, gee. Oh. Uh, how, do you shut, how do you shut it down? You, just you close the valve. <laughs> disengage. No, you close the valve. So there's no water coming in on it. Oh, that seems like too bad, doesn't it? Because it's so, it's, uh, what do you call it, dispatchable? It's dispatchable. Well, it's even, it's even, it's even if you go to the pump, to, uh, pump storage, a 10 megawatt hydro can have a 20 megawatt impact on the grid. If you've got too much power, it can absorb 10. If you're short, it can produce 10, giving you a total swing for that one facility. That's a big swing on almost all the neighbor islands. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm only half joking <coughs> about Coloco because people are nervous about, you know, retaining water behind a dam. Um, but, but what about the old EIS problem? Uh, what about the effect on the environment in that area? If you want to build one of these things from scratch, one thing, we have six or eight of them from, you know, years gone by, 100 years plus, and they're beautiful. I, I can tell you the one at Wailuku is like, it's beautiful. It's painted bright colors. Mm -hmm. It's a big room, clean as a pin, and it you know it runs all the time, generating power. Um, but if you wanted to build one from scratch, you'd have to get an EIS, wouldn't you? Be a big deal. I don't think so. Well, you wouldn't build a new one. You'd use the existing reservoirs that are there. All you're doing is adding a pipe and a generator. Yeah, you put a generator. In yeah, at the bottom. Um, Lake Wilson would work fine. In fact, there used to be one that ran off Lake Wilson. Mm -hmm. In fact, the little building is still there. We could do this all around the state. Yes. We could do a lot more. The Hawaii has, is rich, hopefully. I mean, we had a, a show on Monday this week about how we're running out of water. But uh, let's assume we, you know, at least for the next few years, we have adequate water to run all these hydro plants. We could do a lot of energy with these hydro plants. Do you realize that we're not even close to running out of no, water? Of course. I, I expected you would. You as a, a licensed engineer would correct me. <laughs> and, and if you're doing pumped hydro, you pump the same water up and down. No I mean, you're going to lose a little bit in the process. But it's, no consumption. It's not like this water has gone forever. It, yeah. You just turn it around and And use the energy that you generate with it and then run it up to the top again. Right. You know, there's so many brilliant solutions out there just along the same lines. We had a show uh, early this week uh, by a guy named Lynn Muller, and he's in Vancouver. And he's invented a system where you take the heat uh, off um, sewage and, and wastewater in a given condominium building, and you save that, and you use it to heat up the fresh water that's coming in. And so you save an enormous amount of energy that way. 
with a completely inside system, and it runs on its own power. I mean, oh, wow. Or well, very little external uh, electrum. And uh, apparently this heat exchanger idea um, and heat pump idea, you know, can be extremely, and it's the same idea here. It sort of works by itself. It feeds itself. And so this would be a very efficient way of producing energy if we could do this. Well, 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 I put the same question to you, George. Why don't we do pumped hydro using these reservoirs or maybe building one on top of the other? Are you res ready to invest? <laughs> uh, I go the way Wall Street goes. I see. <laughs> and you know how Wall Street is going. Boy, this past week, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for next week. <laughs> No, you know, I mean, I think, uh, the thing is that people are not going to invest big bucks in this kind of thing, and it's very expensive, I and mean, you've got to have the land and the construction to build reservoirs, and not cheap. Well, but we don't really have to build reservoirs. They exist. All of the you plantations. Have two of them for pump type. Well, and, yeah. and, you know, what... Usually there's two available. Ah. They have a reservoir here. They store the high-level water when it comes in. They have another one down here, and it was used to distribute for irrigation. Mm -hmm. So frequently, there was two on Maui near this one little one that we were working on. So you don't have to build a whole bunch and of... They don't have to be on top of each other either. They no. can be at some no. distance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the closer they are, the better. Yeah. And well, in fact, you want a lot of distance between the top one and the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Altitude, yeah. Right. head as we call it. Yeah. Feed different. But actually, there's one where you've only got to build one to have a pumped storage system. How do you do that? The other one is readily available. It's a huge one. It's called the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so right above, on the cliff, you have a totally vertical system. And then above it, uh, just inland a little bit, you build one reservoir, salt water. It's a salt water reservoir. Yes. If you don't mind using salt water, that works well. Works fine. It, I mean, there, there are places in Japan, I believe, that are, are yeah. doing exactly that. Salt water is not bad. Every ship on the face of the earth deals with a lot of salt water. So it's very easy to deal with. Yeah. In fact, the Amfac building is cooled with salt water. Directly? Directly. Not an exchanger or anything like that? No, it's like an that. exchanger. So they take water out of the well that's in where you go into the parking lot. It goes through a titanium heat exchanger. That's better than a cooling tower. And but, cheaper. Um, well, much cheaper. And not only that, they don't use potable water, and they don't dispose of the blowdown. So it relieves the aquifer, and the Honolulu aquifer, is, you know, right. that's one that's stressed. The system that does not use local water supply. Right. And then the disposal goes straight back into the harbor. Ray, you wanted to say something. <laughs> I think you've I think covered it. it. <laughs> George has said it all. Well, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way, though. If I made you king, or maybe chief engineer of the state, I don't think we have one, chief engineer of the state, maybe we should have one. What would you do to enjoy, you know, these technologies that you found years ago on the plantations? Just build them, just like we did H-Power, just like we did the big new power plant at Lehui, um, like restore the thing, the little hydro that Ray and I did. Um, there's a lot of things, and if you've got enough small ones, it adds up just ones that are going, water is going down now to the lower elevations where a lot of farming is going on. Oh, on the North Shore. That's a whole other story too. Yeah. Well, on the North Shore, there's a lot of farms that are on the former sugar lands, but the water comes from above. And on the way down, just enclose it, don't put it in a ditch. Mm -hmm. Or put the pipe in the old ditch. Well, I think I, there's got to be a future for it. But, you know, you mentioned earlier this, uh, what you call it, seniority yep. of uh, other renewable sources. Um, so if you start building and, uh, you know, activating these uh, hydro plants, uh, you're going to run into that problem, right? Uh, and, uh, and then you have to turn the valve off once in a while, then, and you're reducing the benefit of it, having gone through the... Uh, well, now, I've got a solution to that, but you need an hour and a half program for that. Well, why don't you condense it to <laughs> maybe one minute? Change the way that we qualify these plants. Don't go through what we're doing now. How, how exactly? We... Just like we did when the first law was passed, Act 102. We had what's called avoided cost. That was what you got paid. No negotiations, none of that. If you didn't like it, don't build a plant. If you do like it, the utility buys. Act 102. Think that would work? 
worked fine. And it wouldn't matter what, what your uh, source was. And it didn't Everybody have to be so reviewed by anybody yeah, else. If it was uh, efficient, fine. If it was not efficient, well, you got to mean you got. Well, if it's not efficient, it's your fault. Yeah. If I build a plant and it's not efficient, that's not the government's problem. Yeah. That's not the county's problem. Capitalism at work. Free enterprise. Shaka baby. Shaka baby. It's all the same. <laughs> so Ray, I mean, uh, can you kind of uh, synergize this for us? Uh, what is George really saying? <laughs> He's really saying that there's a lot of opportunity out here and we sit around and scratch our heads and uh, wonder why we're not getting to 100% uh, clean energy sooner and, and I think we can and it's just a matter of going back and taking a look at what's out there and, and maybe uh, trying to think of different ways to get there from the way we've been uh, getting there in the past. It took so long, it cost so much. Uh, if you could expedite things, um, in particular where you've got existing uh, reservoirs where all you're doing is putting a, a pipe in between with a, a pumping station and a generator, and it seems to me that that could be done fairly easily without a whole lot of environmental impact. And, uh, you know, if, if you really want to get there, and I think climate change is dictating that we need to get there sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. then uh, I think we need to put our heads together and find out how we can best do it. Yeah. It's actually a very elegant solution, isn't it? You know, they say the best solutions are the ones right there in front of you. Yeah, that simple. You, that you hadn't been thinking of, and this would be one of them. Well, the way to get it done, what's the shoe company that says, just do it? Yeah, well, yeah, we say that on Think Tech all the time. <laughs> just, yeah, do just do it. Do it. But then there are reasons why people can't just do it. <laughs> yes. We're with you, George. <laughs> okay, we're going we're to call it a wrap on this. Uh, thank you very much for coming down. Thank you, sir. I hope something happens on this. I hope somebody watches this and gets the idea. It's out there. It's for the taking. It's something we know how to do. Good night. <laughs> George, thank night. you so much for coming. My pleasure. And uh, Jay, thank you for having us on. Thank you.